Magnificent Montague, starring Monty Woolley. Yes, it's the Magnificent Montague, the Saturday night transcribed feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by the makers of Allison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. It's been many years since the name of Edwin the Magnificent Montague has been seen in lights starring in a Shakespearean production. Today, he is Uncle Goodhart, hero of an afternoon radio program. It is early afternoon. Montague, having finished his program, is expected home momentarily. And awaiting him is his wife, Lily, and the Montague maid, Agnes, who is happily planning dinner. abba dabba 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 said the monkey to the chimp. abba dabba 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 Yeah, honey? Oh, was that you? Yeah, I was singing. Oh. Well, that's nice. Yeah, I'm thinking about what I'm going to cook for your husband tonight. Singing keeps me from being revolted. <laughs> oh, come, Agnes. Cooking for Edwin is no problem. It ain't the cooking. It's the serving. I got to get my hands off the plate or they'll get bitten off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come, Agnes. He's not that big an eater. He ain't, huh? Honey, when he says a horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse, he ain't reciting Shakespeare. He's ordering lunch. <laughs> Have you decided what to make for dinner? Let me see now. Maybe a nice, thick sirloin steak. Oh, good. Edwin loves steak. He does, huh? Well, then that's out. Oh, <laughs> no, Agnes. Don't you think it's time you and Edwin called a stop to this bickering and shook hands? Honey, the day I came to work here... <laughs> it's so senseless. This has been going on for 25 years. Why? Why? Because for 25 years I've been asking him to do me one little favor, and he always refuses. Well, what do you want him to do? <laughs> Stop. I know the two of you just live to argue with each other. Now, why don't you run down and get three nice steaks for dinner? Three steaks? Okay, I'll go buy them. Give me your jewels to hawk. Oh, is meat still so expensive? Expensive? It's cheaper to eat a mixed green salad made of $50 bills. Really? Oh, that butcher of ours, is he riding high? He don't even cut the meat himself anymore. He's got a surgeon from John Hopkins working at the meat <laughs> Oh, that's silly. All the butcher does is weigh the meat. His thumb is insured for $400,000. Oh, now, stop being ridiculous. You've always gotten along with the butcher. Oh, someone's at the door. I'll get it. Well, well, hello, Mr. Zinzer. Oh, hello, Agnes. It's Mr. Zinzer, the director of Montague's radio program. Well, come in, Mr. Zinzer. Hello, Mrs. Montague. I came to see Mr. Montague. <laughs> He isn't here yet. He went to his proscenium club right after the broadcast. Oh, fiddle faddle. <laughs> well, what is it? Uh, can I help? Oh, no, it's very personal. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Zinza, you can tell me. Well, it's not the kind of thing I like to discuss. <laughs> Mr. Zinza, we're old friends. You can tell me. Go ahead. Well, my wife. Oh, I shouldn't be saying this. <laughs> oh, Mr. Zinza, out with it. What is it? Well, <laughs> my wife is expecting. <laughs> Mr. Zinza, a baby? What'd you think? A Maytag automatic washing machine? <laughs> That's wonderful. But tell me, Mr. Zinza, what has this got to do with Edwin? The suspense is killing me. Agnes. Well, you see, my wife, Mrs. Z, is a great admirer of your husband. She listens to him as Uncle Goodhart on the radio, and she thinks he must be just as sweet and kind in real life as he is on the radio. <laughs> Stupid, isn't she? <laughs> Mr. Zinza, where does Edwin come in? Well, I'm coming to that. You see, my wife's in the hospital right now. You mean... Any minute. <laughs> well, shouldn't you be at her side? Well, I guess so, but she made me come over here to ask Mr. Montague to be... <laughs> oh, the whole thing is mad, mad. <laughs> she wants Edwin to be what? The baby's godfather. 
Oh. Edwin Montague, the godfather of a baby? <laughs> Bad chance of that happening. I know. I tried to explain to my wife, Mrs. Z, that Mr. Montague is, um, well, not the sentimental type. He, he's, he's more like, um, uh... Say it, a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told her not to bother him, but you know how women are in her <clears throat> condition. <laughs> they want the craziest things. Sour pickles, ice cream, salami. I know. And she wants Montague. <laughs> How about that? I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Zenzer, but knowing the way he feels about oh, it... Oh, I understand. Well, some men love children, like yourself. Yeah, I should. This'll make ten. <laughs> ten kids. Stranger than fiction. <laughs> I love kids. I hang their baby shoes on the windshield of my car. Really? Mm -hmm. I got to drive with my head out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Zinger, you'd better get back to your wife in the hospital. I can't. I've got to go home and take care of the kids. Oh, but, but she shouldn't be alone in the hospital at a time like this. Uh, she don't mind. We got nine more kids at home. Lying in the hospital having a baby is the only rest she gets. <laughs> Agnes, we'll go up and see Mrs. Zinza this afternoon. Oh, she'd like that. She's in room 204 at the Riverside Maternity Hospital. Room 204. Remember that, Agnes. 204. We'll see her every day. Oh, she'll only be there until the baby comes. But, Mr. Zinza, she can't bring a new baby right into a house that already has nine children. I know, but she hates hospitals. What can I do? Well, she and the baby ought to be in a quiet place for a week or so. Some place where people can wait on her... Mr. Zinder, I have it. You have? She can stay here. Honey, are you nuts? No. <laughs> Mrs. Zinder could have the guest room and we can use Edwin's den as a nursery for the baby. Honey, you can't have a baby spend the first week of its life in the same house with Montague. It'll warp its mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. Montague, but it'd be too much trouble. Trouble? A baby in the house. Oh, it would be wonderful. I'm so excited. Agnes, let's start making arrangements. A bath and net, diaper service, bottle warmer. And a straitjacket. <laughs> straitjacket? For Montague when he hears about it. <laughs> oh, that's right, Edwin. He'll flip his lid. <laughs> Forget about it, honey. No, I will not. Mr. Zinzer, I'll discuss it with my husband. I'm sure having your wife and child here for one week isn't going to kill him. Oh, it won't? Oh, I mean, gosh, Mrs. Montague, you're sure true blue. Well, I'll just get everything ready. Agnes, now go and see your wife this afternoon. Goodbye. Jay, goodbye. Honey, stop kidding yourself. You don't think the magnificent monster's gonna let you bring a baby into his house. Agnes, when I get through explaining what it means to me, he'll come round. I've always been able to handle him. I know, but a baby in his den. This time you're hitting below the beard. <laughs> oh, Agnes, it'll be something I've always wanted to do Taking care of a baby Making the formula, warming the bottles, bathing it Then there's the diaper. That's where I come in <laughs> Oh, Agnes, I'm so thrilled So am I That's Edwin The thrill is gone <laughs> Agnes, let Edwin in Must I? Okay here he is. Hello, Agnes. Hello, Louis. Hello, Edwin. Oh, my, you look happy. Isn't it a lovely spring day? Beautiful. I just walked through Central Park. It's alive with blossoms and flowers. As I walked, I hummed, hark, hark, the lark. Well, shake the larks out of your beard and sit down. Ah, <laughs> uh, Lily, I can't wait until the 4th of July when we can stand in front of the house and fire Agnes. <laughs> Tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. Here comes the bad humor man. Agnes. Lily, I just remembered, it's daylight saving time. Let's turn Agnes back to the junk man. Now, stop that. Edwin, you came home in such high spirits. I was until this loud-mouthed bass started coughing at me. All right. Now, Agnes, be quiet. Edwin, what happened today that makes you so happy? He saw someone run over by a truck. <laughs> Agnes, really? Edwin, now tell me what happened. Lily, when I arrived at the Presidium Club, the members were all excited about something. Guess who wants me? The psychopathic ward at Bellevue. <laughs> now, never mind, Agnes. Who wants you? The drama department at Columbia University. They want me to give a talk tonight on the Shakespearean Theater. Edwin, a lecture at Columbia. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing Eisenhower isn't still president. 
Uh, Agnes, please. If he ever saw Montague with that big mouth of his open, he'd think it was a camouflaged howitzer. Really, Lily, we must get some new furniture for Agnes's room. I've got my eye on the cutest little electric chair. Speaking of... Speaking of furniture, you're in for a surprise. There's going to be a lot of new furniture around here. Oh, Agnes, never mind. Uh, I'll tell him myself. Tell me what? It's a... Nothing much, Edwin. Uh, You see... Uh, Lily, if it isn't important, it can't it wait? I have to go to the library and get some facts on Shakespeare for my lecture tonight. Well, this will only take a minute, Edwin. Uh, Sit down. Before you fall down. (laughs) Agnes, quiet. Hurry up, Lily. What's on your mind? Well, it's so hard to begin... Edwin, we've never had any children. I know, Lily. It's the one thing that's kept us together. (laughs) He's so charming. Uh, Lily, I'm in a hurry. Well, Edwin, uh, haven't you noticed that all the families around us have children? Why, even the Harrisons across the hall have a little girl. Oh, is that what it is? Edward. <laughs> Look, Lily, if you're hitting about a donation for some summer camp to make children healthy, give whatever you want to. Just keep my name out of it. I don't like to encourage that sort of thing. Oh, Edwin, shame on you. Well, children are the... Uh, Lily, don't mention children to me. I don't trust them. But the only children you've ever come in contact with were child actors who were in plays with you. The dirty little scene stealers. <laughs> you can't turn your back on them. Edwin. The magnificent scenes I've played on the stage, I'd have the audience eating out of my hand, and then on would come some miserable curly-haired brat. <laughs> Lisp out two words, the audience would ooh and ah, and I'd be left standing there with my face hanging out. <laughs> children will knife you every time. Edwin, you were a child yourself once. That's a dirty lie. (laughs) He's right. He was born a full-grown monster. Oh, Agnes, you must have been cute when you were born. The pride of the litter. (laughs) Edwin, don't be surprised to wake up some morning and hear the patter of little feet. I knew it. The mice are back. (laughs) Edwin... Let me tell you... Lily, I have a lecture tonight. If you're going to waste my time babbling about children... Honestly, Edwin, you're the most exasperating man in the world. Yeah. You stay out of this, Agnes. <laughs> Just take care of your own duties around here, little brother. Where are my clean shirts? They haven't come back from the laundry yet. Oh, no, I have to lecture tonight. Take it easy, Mr. Montague. The shirts will be here today. Well, they'd better be. Well, they will be. Oh, and it was such a beautiful day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Go oh, quiet. Well, honey, there goes the godfather. Oh, oh, he can be so impossible. Oh, now, honey, don't. Don't take it that way. Just give me the word and I can cook him a dinner that'll end it all. (laughs) When I think of Mrs. Zinza having to go back to a noisy house and we have all this room... Agnes. What? I don't care what Edwin thinks or does about it. We're going to have Mrs. Zinza and her new baby right here. I'm with you, honey. Well, we can't waste a minute. Now, look up a diaper for service. Okay. And we went to crib, a bath and that. We'll need baby oil, talcum powder, scale. Here's a diaper service. Cosmopolitan diaper service. I'll ring them. Mm. We'll, we'll order more milk. I'll get a book on how to make formula. Oh, Agnes, I am so... Th- Hold it, honey. Hello? Cosmopolitan diaper service? One moment. Here, honey. Uh, Hello. I'd like to start the diaper service immediately. Yes, yes, I'll hold the wire. Uh, She's getting an order blank. Agnes will have to rush right up to the hospital to be with Mrs. Zinza. Uh, You have the room? Yeah, 204 Riverside Maternity Hospital. Oh, Agnes, I can't believe it. A baby in our house at last. We'll be back with the magnificent Montague in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. What the fireplace was to early American homes, the television set is to modern American homes. It's the center not only of your life, but your living room. So be smart. Insist not only on RCA Victor million-proof television, proven in well over two million homes, but on RCA Victor million-proof television in a console cabinet. You have your choice of a breathtaking variety of RCA Victor console models. Every one a furniture masterpiece, worthy to occupy the most important place in your living room. Period models like the Regency and the Rutland and the Hillsdale, 
which looked like treasures straight out of an 18th century palace. Classic models like the provincial, whose simple dignity makes it equally fitting for cottage or castle. Streamlined models like the modern, a clean-lined functional beauty on a swivel base. See your RCA Victor dealer tomorrow for your RCA Victor television console. And to you and your family in every sense of the word, happy looking. And now back to the magnificent Montague. He is returning from the library full of facts for his lecture. But he returns to an empty house. His wife, Lily, and Agnes are at the hospital awaiting Mrs. Zinzer's blessed event. Well, won't you even open the door for me anymore? Why must I... Where is everybody? Lily? Agnes? Huh. Fine welcome. Just when I wanted early dinner to give me time to get over to Columbia University, they, they're out shopping or something. Well, I'd better get dressed. Hope the laundry delivered the shirts. Oh, th- this must be the laundry here on the table. What's this? Halcom powder. Oil. Cotton. What junk women have to use. Maybe they put the shirts in my bedroom. If they didn't come... Cosmopolitan diaper service. <laughs> hey! How do you like that? It's a hurry call and no one's home. Hello! Hello! Got a shirt of the... Oh, there you are. Cosmopolitan. Well, it's about time. I got here as soon as I could. Your wife phoned. Good. Where are they? I got them in the truck. In the truck? I got to put one on right away. <laughs> you? <laughs> Who do you think they were for? Well, live and learn. <laughs> if you still wear them, you still wear them. <laughs> Will you hurry up? I'm lecturing at Columbia tonight. Do you want me to stand in front of the entire drama department without one on? <laughs> no, no. Don't just stand there with your mouth open and get them. This is a formal affair. I hope they've been starched. Starched? Starched? This is a new complaint. It's always they ain't soft enough. Do you mind if I like them stiff so they don't wrinkle and fit nice and snug? They'll fit you nice and snug. Good. Then please do not. Okay. First, I better bring in the can. Can? What can? There's no charge for the can. It's part of our service. A can? Yeah, well, you can throw the used ones. Oh, never, never mind. I just throw the old ones in the closet. In the closet? Yes. Well, anything wrong with that? No, it's your closet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now get them. I hope the buttons are still on. Buttons? Look, with our kind, you just need safety pins. <laughs> safety pins on a shirt? Shirt? Hey, what are you talking about? My shirts? Aren't you delivering laundry? Look, mister, I'm from the Cosmopolitan Diaper Service. <laughs> diaper Service? You've got the wrong apartment. No, 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 I ain't. Ain't this the apartment of Mr. and Mrs. Edwin Montague? Here, look at the order. Lily Montague. Lily Montague. Well, she probably had it delivered here because someone in the building wasn't home. She probably left a note about it. Oh, yeah, here, here's her note. On the telephone stand, it says... It says, Dear Edwin, you can reach me in room 204, Riverside Maternity Hospital. What's the matter with Lily lately? Get bending my ear about children. I, I find baby powder and oil all over the house, a diaper service. Now she's in room 204 at the Riverside Maternity I'm, I'm a father. I'm a father. Take it easy, mister. I'm a father. I'm a father. Hey, hey, come here. You better lie down. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. Me? Father? I can't believe it. Lily, I must call. Lily, where's the phone? Oh, here. What's the matter with this telephone? Hey, mister, you're dialing a bridge lamp. <laughs> well, I'll make the call for you. What's the number? Here. The note. Room Riverside uh, at the 204 Maternity Hospital. Here, here's the note. Yeah, all right. I got it. Oh, poor Lily. All afternoon she tried to tell me. I just insulted her. Oh, did they ever live such a miserable dog as I am? I'm, I'm a cab. A horrible, horrible cat. Hello? Riverside Maternity Hospital? One moment. 
Here's the phone. Uh, 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 hello? I want room to... to, 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 to. Hotel line. Okay, okay. He wants room 204. What? Not accepting any calls? What is it? No calls. Must be pretty close. I must get to the hospital. You have a truck? Let's go. It's full of diapers. I'll buy them all. Let's go. <laughs> Mister, will you relax? They won't let you in there until 4 o'clock. Look, I'll go bring up your diapers. So long. Lily. She'll be in that hospital with all those squalling brats. What am I saying? Oh, what am I saying? Oh, one of them will be mine. My son. I will mold him into a great actor. I will teach him all I know. He will carry on the name of Montague. The Shakespearean theater will live again. His debut will be in Romeo and Juliet. And like his daddy, he will be the greatest Romeo who ever lived. <laughs> Hello, Harvard University. We'll take this down. I wish to register Master Edwin Montague, Jr. in the class of 1970. Thank you. Yes, sir, what'll it be? I want ten boxes of the best cigars you have in the place. Ten boxes? I said ten boxes. For your information, I'm about to become a father. You? Yes. Yeah. Have a box on me. <laughs> That's a nice toy. I'll take two of them, clerk. Uh, now, what have I got? Uh, the catcher's glove, the football, the hop-along Cassidy cowboy outfit. I'll pick up the rest later. Gad, I hope they deliver the pony to the apartment on time. <laughs> Doctor, for heaven's sake, what's happening in room 204? Not you again. I told you all we can do is wait. I've been waiting for four hours. You'll have to wait it out just like the other fathers here in the waiting room. And don't bother me anymore. Don't be impertinent, young man. I'll report you. I'm in radio. I'm a very close friend of young Dr. Malone. <laughs> Please, look at my hands. They're shaky. Have another sedative. Hurry, Doc. Room 204. Something's cooking. Coming. Agnes. Oh, so you decided to show up after all. Show up? Where should I be at a time like this, Agnes? Wait, what's happening? They just pushed the bed into the delivery room. The delivery room? Quick. How is Lily? Lily's fine. She helped him push the bed in. <laughs> oh. what, what kind of a hospital is this? Agnes, when you see Lily, tell her I'm sorry for the way I spoke about children this afternoon. It's time you were sorry, you beast. Agnes, wait. Oh, this waiting. This eternal waiting. Oh, uh, excuse me, mister. You got a match? Here. Keep the box. Thanks. You're nervous? What do you think? I shake like this all the time? <laughs> this your first? My what? Your first. Your first kid. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, my name's Simon. Rudolph Simon. The name mean anything to you? Simon? Rudolph Simon? No, I can't say it does. What's the matter, Whiskers? Don't you read the newspapers, don't you? <laughs> the newspapers? You're in the newspaper? Every year, like a clock. Rudy Simon does it again. Triplets, twins, quadruplets. <laughs> I'm high score for this hospital. <laughs> oh, you're that Rudy Simon. Remember me now, huh? Ah. <laughs> you know, the way I figure it, if people don't even remember you for a thing like that, is the whole thing worth it? <laughs> Simon, believe me, at any other time, I'd try and figure out that statement. Right now, I'm too nervous. And you know the most amazing thing? Well, what? Me with twins, triplets, quadruplets, schmadruplets. <laughs> Would you believe it? When I play a slot machine, nothing happens. <laughs> yeah, take the other day. Okay, Mr. Simon, it's a boy. How many? Only one. You're kidding. No, only one. How do you like that? And I passed up a pinochle game just to be here tonight. <laughs> Please. All right. No news from room 204. Cat, I hope Lily realizes the torture I'm going through. Oh, hello, Mr. Montague. Zinza. <laughs> Zinza, you came here. Yes, sir. I didn't think I could break away from the kids. Zinza, how sweet of you to come here. Well, I thought it was my place to be here. Zinza, I'll never forget you for this. You won't? It's in times like these that a man finds who his real friends are. I have a friend. You have? Where is he? <laughs> you! Me? 
Oh, it was terribly sweet of you to be here, Mr. Montague. Since, sir, it's my place to be here. It is? Sir, <laughs> when she comes out of the ether, I'm going to be right to her side. Well, she'd like that. She's crazy about you. Imagine, Zinza, I, Edwin Montague, after all these years. Okay, folks, the waiting's over. Agnes! It's a six-pound bouncing baby girl. A baby girl, Zinza, did you hear? A baby! A baby girl. Yes, Edwin, isn't it wonderful? Wonderful, why, it's a... <laughs> Lily! Get her back to bed. Oh, no. Lily, are you crazy? What kind of a hospital is this? Give me the head position. Now, Edwin, quiet. Mrs. Zinza is asleep. Mrs. Zinza, is she here, too? <laughs> she here, too, she just had the baby. Mrs. Zinza had our baby. <laughs> what kind of a hospital is this? Edwin, what are you talking about? Lily, the diaper service, the baby oil, the pony, the patter of little feet. Well, that's right. Mrs. Zinza and the baby are going to stay with us for a week. They are? And Edwin, it was wonderful of you to show up to be the godfather. I'm a godfather. Oh, no! <laughs> in the morning, Lily. What did you do asking them here? Edwin, go back to sleep. Oh, who can sleep? Mrs. Zinzer in the guest room, the baby in my den. Now, Edwin, stop crabbing. You're the godfather. Wasn't it sweet of them to call the little girl Edwina? Lily, stop with that slushy sentiment. Oh, go to sleep. Baby, stop crying. Must say, Edwin, little Edwina certainly seems to like you. Really, Lily, of all the stupid things to say that a tiny little baby knows enough to recognize. Lily. Lily. She's asleep. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> Edwina, Edwina, it's me, Uncle Eddie. <laughs> kitchy, 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 coo. <laughs> ah, listen to that voice. Gad, she will be the greatest Juliet of all time. <laughs> Every day you hear more and more about an incredibly fast way to relieve the pains of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. It's Anacin, A-N-A-C-I-N. Now, the reason Anacin is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anacin is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anacin contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician. And in this way, discover the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30, economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Ask for Anison at any drug counter. Listen again next week, friends, to the Magnificent Montague, the Saturday night transcribed feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. The Magnificent Montague was written by Nat Hyken and Billy Friedberg. Anne Seymour was Lily, Pert Kelton was Agnes. Also heard were Art Carney, John Griggs, and Johnny Gibson. This is Don Pardo speaking. Tomorrow, hear Archie Andrews and Quiz Kids on NBC.